king to see ba rum pa bum bum Our finest gifts we bring ba rum pa bum bum To lay before a king ba rum pa bum bum Rum pa bum bum Rum pa bum bum So
that you delivered will soon deliver you. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his Amen. Well, uh, cool. <laughs> this is our 12th concert in a row. And I'll have you, yeah. I know Lee, we, we look fresh, don't we? <laughs> I've never done 12 concerts consecutively in my entire life. So uh, God is, uh, he is awesome and his strength is perfect in weakness and I'm counting on that right now. So uh, I don't know what might come out of my mouth tonight. I'm like, Lord, just speak to me because I might really say something stupid uh, as tired as I am. Um, see, I can't even remember what song we're doing next. We do. Oh yeah, I know what we're doing next. Okay. <laughs> but you don't. <laughs> Um, we brought all of our kids up here. We have nine kids. Yeah. We, um, you're going to hear more about them uh, shortly. Um, this next song is, is an original Christmas song that um, I wrote with a friend of mine. But it's basically uh, the gist and the idea behind this song is that the, the king of kings, you know, 
Everything he did was unlikely for a king. Of all the places that he could come to, he, he was born and placed into a manger, a feeding trough. Unlikely place for deity to be placed into a feeding trough. The next place that he went was, was so unlikely was to be executed. A completely perfect man executed by the most brutal execution there was at the time crucifixion probably to this day he went to the cross of all the places he could go he went to the cross for you and I so that he might become our sin in exchange for his righteousness that we may become his righteousness that is the story of Christmas that's why he was born and uh, it's an adoption story it's so that you and I can be adopted uh, you're going to hear about our adoption story. We've adopted. And uh, and Christmas is an adoption story. Jesus coming, being born, going to the cross, ultimately so that he can live in our hearts, so that we could be adopted by the Father. That is the story. And this song is called, Of All the Places. La, la, la. and creator the truth the life the way and it seems like such a shame to find the name above all names in such a cold unholy place
Well, we, um, <clears throat> once upon a time, we had just him. And then there was Hadley. So we had our boy and our girl. And we thought, okay, we're done. We got a boy and a girl. And then Sophie came unexpectedly. We don't even know how that happened. And then Zeke came along. And we're like, we got two girls, two boys. We got four kids. We're officially on the freak list in our country when you have four or more in this country you know how it goes people start saying funny things to you but anyway so then we had Josiah so then we we had five so we're really one of those families that's like busting out of a minivan practically you know and so that's when people started really just kind of thinking whoa you got your hands full and um, the day after Josiah was born um, we were at the hospital we we're waiting for my mom to show up my mom and dad to come meet Josiah um, and my mom arrived in an ambulance had a heart attack and she passed away in the hospital same hospital never met Joey that grieved me so much to lose her but then not her not get, be able to meet Josiah and wish you could meet Josiah he, he, he's in the playroom and, and we were going to get him to introduce me tonight but he, he was just having a good old time he's three Zeke is almost six and they're back there playing but um, um so within a few months I'm you know grieving the loss of my mother I'm trying to bond with my son uh, and my wife takes a trip with me and we go out west somewhere and I, I did a concert out there and there's a bunch of families there who um, had adopted from around the world. And uh, they were hosting us. And so all these kids are running around, you know, red, yellow, black, and white. They were all there. And it was so cool. And this one little girl really took to my wife. And uh, I love what you're playing. I love it so much that I can't remember my story when I'm listening to it. So play a little softer. I'm like that sounds really good that's my guitar these are both my guitars I really love the way that one sounds but it's distracting me it sounds so good okay just real my brain is like jelly okay yeah I like the swells better the whales mating that's better okay so my story somebody tell me where I was the concert right jo Josie went with me these kids adopted from around the world. This little girl from China sitting in Josie's lap constantly. I'm like, what's up with that? This little girl's so cute. And she really likes my wife. And so by the end of the trip, we go back home and um, we're on the plane. And my wife says, I know this sounds crazy, but I feel like we're supposed to adopt. And I was like, wow, like we got a baby. We just had him. He's brand new. He can hear you. You women are never satisfied. So I've always been the crazy one. She's a little more on the, you know, she's got her feet on the ground. She keeps my feet on the grounds, but we immediately, I'm like, all right, that sounds great. I've always wanted to adopt. So as soon as she said that, I'm like, boom, we're on the same page. Let's go do this. And we start down that path and we decide we're going to pray about it for like, we're going to pray and fast because we feel like we need to really hear from God. Our daughter's somewhere in the world. We wanted to adopt a little girl, older little girl, three to five years old, and we needed to find her. And so we started praying and fasting and I'm talking stuff started happening immediately. It was so cool. But when you want to, when you need to hear from God and you're praying and you're like, you're just not getting what, you're not getting an answer try fasting because it really puts you in tune with God in a way that, that when you don't fast it, it's different so we're fasting and praying the first day of the fast I fly out to a concert this little girl comes up to me and wants me to sign her an autograph on her CD 
she says her name's Anna, and I write to Anna on her CD, and as soon as I write that name, God speaks to my heart and says, that is your daughter's name. And I'm just like, whoa, is that God? Is that me talking to me? Is that God? God, if that's you, confirm it. The next day I go home, and Josie's reading the Bible, and one-year Bible, that one little paragraph she's reading, it was, it's the uh, one-year Bible that's, so the reading for the day for the New Testament was about a prophetess named Anna. Boom, there it is confirmation next night I go to bed have a dream and in the dream I'm surrounded by all these older kids in an orphanage middle school high school kids and I see a girl standing by herself or actually sitting by herself long brown hair straight skin's like porcelain so it's like a doll she's about seven I think and I look over at her but she's not Chinese I notice because we were thinking of adopting a Chinese little girl Look at her and I say, hey, what's your name? And she immediately looks up and says, Anna. And I say, Anna, how old are you? And she says, I am 10. I was like, 10? I was like, whoa, never thought of adopting a 10-year-old girl. And then my mom shows up in the dream and I start crying because I see my mom and I embrace my mom and I, and I begin to tell my mother about Anna. And this is a special, special moment for me in my dream because, you know, when you lose somebody, I mean, it's, when you dream about them, it's just like so comforting. And, and I dreamed about her, and there she was. And I was hugging her, and I said, Mom, I just met my daughter. Her name's Anna, and we're going to adopt her. And I'm thinking, I get to tell you first. And then I wake up crying, and my wife's like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, and I said, I just met our daughter. I know what she looks like. She's 10. She's got long brown hair, straight. Her face is, her skin's really like porcelain. and She's beautiful. She says she's 10, but she looks like she's about seven. And I think she's Eastern European. I'm not sure. So the next night we go to this Bible study and this couple is there and they hear, they hear us tell the story. And yet, of course, the name gets confirmed again by somebody who didn't even speak English. I, I don't want to go into that, but it, Anna once again the name was confirmed and then this couple came up to me in the night and said hey we heard the story we sent an email out up to a, a gal up in New Jersey who heads up the uh, Project 143 Ukrainian hosting you said she, she's Eastern European or you think she is well today's the last day you can sign up to host an orphan older orphan in your home and I got an email back with a, a picture of a little girl that we believe could be her I mean so you just look and you tell me what you think. And so I, I took the phone and I opened the picture and there she was. It was absolutely beyond a shadow of a doubt. It was her. I like that. We can clap if you want to. You look tired, Bailey. <laughs> Don't let them know that you're tired. <laughs> He is a young grasshopper. I am training him in the ways. Um, so anyway. Yeah, I don't remember where I was. Yes. 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 Thank you. So I'm opening up the email. And there she was. And um, I said, I, that is her beyond a shadow of a doubt. They said, are you sure it's her? I said, absolutely. They said, well, you need to know. She comes with an amazing 14-year-old brother. Sorry. I'm like, maybe it's not her. But I was, I was positive it was her. Her name was Anna. She was almost 10. By the time we'd adopt her, she would be 10. It was exactly the girl in my dream. And so I'm like, but I did not sign up for a 14-year-old brother. He was 14. He was plenty amazing if you know what I mean and so we go home we pray about it we're struggling with it but we get a peace that passes all understanding sometimes that's all you get to be with a move ahead in faith and so we did and decided to host them and they showed up a month later at the airport we greeted them and played charades because they didn't speak much English at all and it was fun we fell in love with these kids they fell in love with our family and they fit right in it was awesome and by the end of the summer 
We asked them if they wanted to be in our family. We wanted to adopt them. And of course, they said yes. I said, well, you have to go back, but we're going to be there to come get you. We're coming to get you, and we'll be there before Christmas, if at all possible. We send them back, tears in our eyes, and we finish our paperwork. And we finally get a travel date so quickly because they're older, you know? I mean, Max was in danger of aging out of the orphanage, you know? And so we um, get ready to travel. We got our plane tickets. And then I get this email out of blue from our facilitator in Ukraine, and he says... He says, I'm sorry I missed this, but somehow I missed this. Max and Anna have a sister. And she is 12 years old. He said, if you're willing to take her too, no more charge. I was like, free kid. Happy day. Like a Russian. So, yeah, I'm giving you the short version, but we decided without even having met this girl that it was the only thing to do. They had been separated for seven years, sent to a different orphanage because she, had, she was nearsighted. So they thought, we're sent her to a different orphanage. She needs help with that. And so they were split up, didn't know each other, but we brought them back together and we decided to, to adopt all of them. And, and, um, and the day before we flew over to Ukraine, God provided everything we needed and we all got to go for a month. The day before we left, we found out we were expecting a baby. But I tell you what, he's the, he's the glue of the family. His name's Israel. You'll, you'll meet them all tonight. They're all here. Um, he's the most precious baby, but it's like everybody loves this kid. And, and, and uh, he's, he's like... He's the, the new and the, and, and the biological and the adopted. And then he, he came along and was like, it's just, it's amazing how it all just fits together and how it works. So, you know, Max is back there running the computer. Bailey is here. The girls have been setting up. I mean, it, we usually we bring them up here and do a song for everybody, but we don't have time tonight. But, um, oh, did you say, oh, so we should do that? Can you round them up, Josie? We'll, go, we'll bring them in. Come on. All right, we're going to do it. <laughs> I'm hoping they come back because they all have a line to sing. When you're a big family, everybody says funny things to you, especially at Sam's Club. When you bring them all with you and you have a train of carts because you have so much groceries in bulk and uh, here's some of the things they say uh, so we're going to put it into the 12 days of Christmas okay I hope others show up on the first day of Christmas a stranger said to me oh boy you have got your hands full on the second day of Christmas a stranger said to me you must be Catholic. Oh boy, you, you have, have got, got your hands full. Lady, everybody. This is the bonus child. Amen. We're on the third, uh, second, third. On the third day of Christmas, a stranger said to me, How do you afford it? Oh boy, you have got your hands full. You must be Catholic. Oh boy, you have got your hands full. I told our they already know what my brain is like. What day are we on? Fourth. <laughs> I don't even know what day it is. On the fourth day of Christmas, a stranger said to me, Are you having more? How do you afford it? You must be Catholic. Oh boy. You have got your hands full. Okay, listen, we're going to need y'all's help. Don't clap because we'll just all get off. It'll like be like a train wreck. Because nobody really does this in time, I promise you. Uh, you just do. Oh boy, you got your hands full with me. That would be cool. On the fifth day of Christmas, a stranger said to me, Oh, 
they said that's translated. All they are you all they are they all yours. Okay? Are they are yours? Okay. Three, four. Are you having more? On the sixth day, on the sixth day of Christmas, a stranger said to me, What are you than me? Are they are you? Yeah. Yes. Are you having more? How do you afford it? You must be Catholic. Oh boy, you have got your hands full. On the seventh day. Of Christmas, a stranger said to me, How do you manage? Better you than me. Are they, they are yours? Y'all you gotta quit doing that so loud, you're killing everybody. <laughs> are you having more? How do you afford it? You must be Catholic. Boy, you have got your hands full. On the eighth day of Christmas, a stranger said to me, You know how that happens, right? Yes. How do you manage? Better you than me. Are they are yours? Are you having more? A stranger said to me Which ones are twins? You know how that happens, right? No, I don't got your hands full. Oh boy, you have got your hands full. We really do. Twelve is a lot. I wish we could do like six days of Christmas. On the tenth day of Christmas, a stranger said to me, is this a daycare? Which ones are twins? You know how that happens, right? Right? No. Come on! How do you manage? Better you than me. Yeah, yes. Are you having more? How do you afford it? You must be Catholic. Oh boy, you have got your hands full. On the eleventh day of Christmas. A stranger said to me Just wait until they're teens Is this a daycare? Which ones are twins? You know how that happens, right? Yes, I do now How do you manage? Better you than me Are you having more? How do you afford it? You must be Catholic. Oh boy, you have got your hands full. On the twelfth, thank God, of Christmas, a stranger said to me, We'll find them a husband. No, I, I messed that up. On the twelfth day of Christmas, we, we joyfully reply. We'll find them a husband. No, we're not a daycare. They're two years.
years apart. Yes, and we like it. What? One day at a time. We are very blessed. Yes. Cheaper by the dozen. We shop, shop at Sam's Club. Club. No, we're not Mormon either. And we wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> uh oh. No. All right. Thank y'all. Victory. What? Thank y'all. So, hey, man, I'm, I'm so glad we did that. Um, you know, it's, our life is crazy, no doubt about it, but I'll never regret uh, the life that God's given us. I mean, it is, it is, it is, it is good. And this is a song that kind of came out of this whole story. It's called Crazy Faith. You know, when God's calling you to do something, it doesn't work on paper. Our life doesn't work on paper. It just doesn't. But it works because God leads us and we live by faith. And it's crazy faith. And that's what this song is called. to move this is crazy yeah her face in that picture I said that's our daughter but we can't swim this ocean but you're telling us to move this is crazy scares me yeah but it's gonna take yeah, crazy faith yeah. so what if it cost me everything I'm stepping out I'm taking the leap of crazy faith children where we never thought we'd go this is crazy lord i never thought we'd go and it scares me yeah but it's gonna Stepping out, I'm taking the leap, and it's gonna take crazy faith. So, what if it costs me everything? I'm stepping out, I'm taking the
stepping out I'm taking the leap of crazy faith Crazy I'm going to invite Anna to come back up here. She's going to pray uh, in Ukrainian uh, for us, which I love to hear her pray in Ukrainian. Um, you know, the heart cry of Anna and every, every orphan in this world is to have, have parents. They want to be loved. They want, wow, that's a, you want to just pull it off the stand and hold it? You just pull it off. There's over 150 million orphans in the world. Hey. And every one of them just wants mom and dad. And uh, if every family in the church adopted one child, they would wipe it out. I don't say that to say like, hey, you should, you should all go out and adopt because that has to be something God leads you to do. And Everybody's not called necessarily to physically adopt a child, but everybody's called to adoption. We could not have adopted these three kids if the people had not said, we're called to the same thing you're called to. Even though they haven't physically adopted, they helped us do it. They gave of their time, they gave of their money, and they helped us adopt these children. And so we're all called to it. We're all called to care for the widow, care for the orphan. And uh, that's pure and undefiled religion. And so... Um, She's going to pray, and I'm going to sing a song that was inspired by her story, every story of every orphan, and the song is called Orphan. Go ahead, on. Amen.
before you leave tonight, there's a table. When, there's several tables when you walk out there, but there's one special table. And it has pictures of beautiful children. Children that are just like Anna and Max and Lainey. Each one of them are one of the 150 million. That number is so staggering. It's like our brain can't even fathom that. What I want you to do is forget about that number. Forget about that. You cannot tackle that number, and I can't either. But you can help one. You can help one. All these kids are up for adoption. And it may be that you're called to adopt one of them, and that's, that'd be awesome. And it may be that you just can help one of them sponsor one of them for a time because a lot happens in these adoptions and we were so blessed to get through ours as smooth as we did and we had three kids and they were older and they really their time was running out so they waited for years so we didn't have to wait as long as some people do there was a family you saw on screen a while ago they were standing there holding two pictures of two boys from Russia they were almost done with their adoption when Vladimir Putin stopped all American adoptions to Russia and they're absolutely devastated and they just you know they came to the video shoot I met them and they were just you know weeping over these boys and believing that somehow God would get them out of there get them home and so a lot of these kids get ca caught up in politics they get caught up in uh, corruption for their countries and their parents just can't, it takes years to get them home and so what they need is they need other people will say, you know what? I'm going to help you out and I'm going to be a part of your story. Even though I'm not the one that's going to be adopting you, I'm going to help support you while you're waiting to be adopted or while you're waiting for your parents to finish your adoption because some of them are in process, some of them are not. This is a little girl from Ethiopia. She's absolutely beautiful. And you know what her name is? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. You can be a part of Bethlehem's life. It doesn't take much money. It's thirty dollars a month, and and yeah, that's money. But I believe when you say, you know what, God, I'm going to put my resources towards caring for orphans. You know, He just multiplies it back to you. He just does, and I know that firsthand because I have three former orphans in my home, but they're not orphans anymore. They are legitimate children, and they're wallers. And I'm as much their father as I am any other child in my home and uh, you know what I do cook a lot of red beans and rice because it goes a long way but we we make it and God provides everything that we need and more he said whatever you give up for the sake of my kingdom I will repay you a hundred times over in this lifetime and that's a promise I don't know exactly what that looks like but I count on it I'm like Lord, we're going to need 100 times over just to feed these kids because they eat 100 times over what they used to. <laughs> if you will sponsor one of these kids, and it may be six months to a year before they're able to get to their forever home, and that may be how long you sponsor them, I would love to give you my new Christmas project, Silent Night, as a gift. Say thank you for being a part of the story of one child. And uh, so I want you to, when we're done, I want you to go check that table out. We're not done yet. I'm going to um, I'm gonna be there, and I'll be glad to sign it for you and uh, tell you more about this. You'll never regret doing this. Uh, my wife is going to come back, and we're going to sing a couple of songs for you. Um, would you like that? I'm not sure where she is, though. There she is. Ladies and gentlemen, this is my wife, Josie Waller. Make him what you want him to be. I pray.
give it up again for her she just switched mics kept it going that was pretty good I know that's what you wanted would have wanted me to do honey uh, the show must go on that's right this is no show Josie this is not a show we want to do one more song for you and then pastor's gonna come um, my favorite Christmas song of all time is uh, Silent Night that's why I named by Christmas project that um, I remember there was a version that I used to listen to. It came on the radio years ago. And it's for my, no for all of you on the front row were born for sure, but it was by a group called Mannheim Steamroller. Yeah, that's, that's the reaction I get every night when I say that. Um, their version of Silent Night had this solo violin um, that was, and it was like these oohs, and and it was just when I heard it. I felt so close to God, and I felt like I was there in that moment in history when the Savior of the world entered into the world and was placed into that manger. I just felt like I was there, experiencing that moment in time when everything changed, when there was a way made for you and I to be adopted to the Father, to return to Him, to be restored to Him when we were separated from him by our sin. And, and so I just remember sitting in the dark and listening to it over and over again. So when I did this project, I wanted to recreate that moment with this song. And as we sing it out, there's a, there's a longer intro. I want you to just watch the screen, watch the words. I'm gonna ask if maybe if we can, I don't know if you can dim the lights at all. If you can, great. If you can't, it's fine. But um, my, my dad, John Waller Sr. is playing the violin on this, so enjoy. Thank you. 
so tender and mild Sleep in heavenly peace Thank you, John and Josie and your 12 kids and counting, or no, nine, ten, nine kids and counting. Don't say that. <laughs> you said something about cheaper by the dozen, so I kind of got stuck in my head. 
Don't you just love it when people take what God's given them and let God use? Amazing gifts, voices, music ability, but they've given so much more tonight, haven't they? They've given their hearts, they've given their story, their lives, their family. Had a flat tire, didn't he mention that? A flat tire on the way, then, you know, then got turned around and in the snow. So they've poured out their hearts for God tonight. For God and to God, I believe. Amen. What I really appreciate is inauthenticity. Just being real. Just being themselves. And we appreciate that so much, guys, because that's what we are here at New Hope. Amen. I have a feeling that uh, this was not just some old Christmas concert that you came to tonight. Amen. I have a feeling that God probably caught you off guard. Doesn't He do that? Doesn't He come at angles? Maybe tonight you expected, I'm going to go to church and we're going to hear some Christmas carols and it'll be fun and it'll be festive. But I hope and I trust that tonight you received a lot more than some Christmas carols. Would you have thought that God would have spoken to you about adoption at a Christmas concert? There is somebody here tonight that God is tapping on your shoulder. Saying, just like John and Josie, just like the Waller stepped out in faith, I'm calling you to go rescue that little orphan in the Ukraine. Wherever it might be. Tonight I want to challenge you. If God is speaking to your heart, would you just say yes? God, I don't even know what it means. I'm sure these guys didn't know what it meant. But yes, God... We're going to fill out the check and, and we're going to sign it and you just, you fill in whatever amount. Because it's you and it's all yours. Amen. Maybe tonight it's not adoption, but to hear about people. Such a blessing to hear from others, isn't it? Other servants of God that live in different places and have done different things. And maybe God's speaking to you about stepping out in faith. I love that crazy faith song. That should be the story of our lives. Not haphazard, be dumb, and all that kind of stuff. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about trusting that a big God can do great things in spite of my mess. Amen? Even through it. And I hope if you're here tonight and you've never met Jesus personally, I'm not talking about going to church. I'm not talking about being baptized when you were a baby or earlier in life. I'm not talking about getting married in the right place. I'm not talking about being perfect. I'm talking about a personal relationship with your Creator. That's what Christmas is about. Christmas is about God coming. He cares. This is not religion. That God loves us and He cares for us. Tonight, if you don't know Christ as your Savior, I want to give you that opportunity to receive the greatest Christmas gift ever. Would you bow with me for just a moment? Let's just wrap up whatever God's saying to our hearts tonight. Maybe it is that step of faith. If you're a believer here tonight, God's calling you to step out in some way. Maybe just say, yes, God, I hear what you're saying. You're speaking to my heart. They don't realize we've been doing a series called Discover Your Purpose. And maybe God's wanting to wrap up some of that. But if you're here tonight and you've never given your life to Jesus, would you say, God, thank you? Thank you for loving me enough to come. Just just in your own words, or you can just repeat after me. Thank you, God, for loving me so much. Thank you, Jesus, for being born into this world. Thank you for living a perfect life. For dying on that cross to pay for what I deserve to pay. I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me for what I've done wrong and be my Savior. Father, we thank you that your word says whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, forgiven, adopted into your family. We worship you tonight, Lord, and we thank you for those who've made that decision. Before we raise our heads, 
you made that decision tonight, nobody else is looking, just me, you, and God, would you slip up your hand and let me know that tonight? If you said, Jesus, I want you to be my Savior, would you lift up your hand? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. Anybody else? Amen. The greatest Christmas present at all, you're receiving it tonight. Amen. Father, thank you that the Bible says there's rejoicing in heaven when people give their lives to you. We pray these things in Jesus' awesome name. Amen. Amen.
Christ was born Oh, holy night Thank you so much. God bless you.